Hi, uh, Rick Sorkin. Harvey Specter, nice to meet you. You should have a seat here. Whoa, what's this? How the hell did you know they were the police? I read this novel in elementary school, and it was the exact same thing. You read a novel in elementary school? What? I like to read. And why'd you ask them what time it was? Uh, throw them off. I mean, what kind of drug dealer asks a cop what time it is when he's got a briefcase full of pot, right? We should hire you. Jesus, I'd give you the 25 grand as a signing bonus. I'll take it. Unfortunately, we only hire from Harvard. And you not only did not go to Harvard Law School, you haven't even gone to any law school. What if I told you that I consume knowledge like no one you've ever met and I've actually passed the bar? I'd say you're full of crap. That's a Barbary legal handbook right there, right? Open it up. Read me something. Anything. Civil liability associated with agency is based on several factors, including, including the deviation of the agent from his path, the reasonable inference of agency on behalf of the plaintiff, and the nature of the damages themselves. How did you know that? I learned it when I studied for the bar. OK, Hotshot. Fire up this laptop. I'm going to show you what a Harvard attorney can do. Pick a topic. Stock option backdating. Although backdating options is legal, violations arise related to disclosures under IRC section 409A. You forgot about Sarbanes-Oxley. The statute of limitations renders Sarbanes-Oxley moot post-2007. Well, not if you can find actions to cover up the violation as established in the Sixth Circuit in May 2008. It's impressive, but you're sitting at a computer playing hearts. Sorry, if you want to beat me, you're going to have to do it as something else. How can you know all that? I told you, I like to read. And once I read something, I understand it. And once I understand it, I never forget it. OK, look, this is all pretty fascinating stuff, but I'm afraid I got to get back to work. I'll make sure that Serpico isn't around waiting for you. this job so much. Why don't you just go to law school? When I was in college, it was my dream to be a lawyer. I needed some money. And Trevor convinced me to memorize this math test and sell it. <laughs> Turns out we sold it to the dean's daughter. I lost my scholarship. I got kicked out of school. I, <sighs> I got knocked into a different life. And I have been wishing for a way back ever since. Let me tell you something. This is an elementary school. This is hard work, long hours, high pressure. I need a grown goddamn man. You give me this, and I will work as hard as it takes to school those Harvard douches and become the best lawyer you have ever seen. Move over. I'm emailing the firm. I just found our next associate. So look, I'm sorry, but I am not. When did you send that letter? Um, I was. Uh... I'll tell you when. Never. Okay, look, let me explain. When I went to see Lewis, he told me what really happened. I know. He told me to. And I get it. I'm not good enough. What I don't get, Mike, is why you didn't have the courage to just come and tell me that yourself. Look, he lied to you. I thought he deserved the chance to tell you himself, all right? When I went to his office to get him to sign the letter, I. When... You went to him to sign the letter? You told me you were going to sign the letter. No. So, no, so you lied to me. No, I didn't. I told you that I would help That you. is such bullshit! That's not what you meant, and you know it. You've been cagey with me since the second I came to you about the letter, and you're being cagey with me right now. You are. You're lying to not me. Not today, Rachel. Then please what stop. day, Mike? Jeez. Because it's always something. It is always some secret, or some story, or some lie. It's you don't understand. I don't understand you what. You don't understand what I have been through. You don't understand what I have lost. 
Because it's everything, everyone that I love. Trevor, my grandmother, Harvey, now probably this job. I am not ready to lose you. Not today. Then tell me. I never went to Harvard. What? I'm a fraud. You know, it's funny. We've never had a ceremony when we've changed names before. But Lewis Litt had the audacity to convene us all here today. And as it turns out, his first decision as name partner is brilliant. Because a ceremony like this gives us a chance to reevaluate where we've been and where we're going. Perhaps you had a disagreement with a colleague or there's some other issue that's been on your mind. The point is, with a new name comes a new beginning. For me, I'm hoping we can see this as a chance to wipe this slate clean. With that said, here's to our newest name partner, Lewis Litt. Nice speech. Let's hope it takes. It's got a better chance of taking now that you made a Sunday agreement. That it does. Speaking of which, when exactly did you know you were going to do that? Oh, um, about 15 seconds after Donna told me he knew. And you didn't feel the need to bring me in on that plan? I felt the exact opposite. What are you talking about? Harvey, Lewis wants to see you suffer. If I had told you, you would have had to fake it, and you're a shitty actor. Excuse me, but I can act. No, everybody thinks they can act. The fact of the matter is, well, you're just a pretty face. Oh, you think I'm pretty? Pretty stupid. It's not your fault, Harvey. I made my case. I convinced you to hire me. I was the one that made the call. You were. It doesn't matter. It's even knowing how it all turned out. I'd do it again. Yes, I would too. Because I never thought in a million years I'd meet someone dumb enough to be willing to go to prison for me. I mean, Donna always said you were looking for another you. I guess you found one. I guess it's time to get busy living or get busy dying. Well, that's goddamn right. Watch your back in there, Mike. Well. 